Okay. Hi, good morning. You're on the air live with Deborah Medina. Yes, uh, good morning, Deborah. Um, good morning. A question, I ha- um, a question I have for you is um, what criteria or standards uh, are you looking for if the event should rise that you would call for succession of this state? What well, I have, need to see? I have... I have said that I believe the founders gave us the tools of nullification and interposition. We've not used those at all, and I I really see us needing to use those very aggressively to restore the sovereignty of the state. I think the U.S. Constitution is the best blueprint ever laid for a free and prosperous society. I want to be real, real careful about doing anything that would take us down the path of secession, especially without first attempting uh, aggressive use of the tools that we have at our disposal to restore that sovereignty. This yeah. nation is the freest and most prosperous, but ultimately it's up to the people of Texas. Uh, I hope to guide us down the, the path of nullification and interposition uh, and believe that we will see our sovereignty as a state restored and the proper balance between the federal government and the state restored. Thanks for that call. What, what tools, Deborah, do you, do you have that you think that the governor has to do that with? Interposition is a tool that the governor can use. It's essentially an executive order that the governor issues to say that unconstitutional federal action, because I think we frequently say federal law, well, if it violates the Constitution, it doesn't have the authority of law we ought to call it federal action. That illegal federal action, that unconstitutional federal action, will have no effect in the state of Texas. And whichever agency of the state is normally um, called upon to enforce those actions would receive an executive order from the governor saying that federal action will not have any effect in Texas and we will not enforce it. We will not use our state's resources to enforce on business, or families, or individuals, or churches, or anybody that's here in Texas, some guideline that the IRS or the EPA or the, you know, you name the any number of federal agents, the, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, ad nauseum, any other federal agency, if it's not an Article One, Section 8 um, issue, then the federal government has no authority there. And interposition is the tool available to the governor. So, so I mean, Rick Perry has, has come out on numerous occasions and said that uh, neither Cornyn nor Hutchinson have done enough, or any of the, uh, the fact of the of the representatives in Washington from Texas have done enough to get their attention up there. Do you? I guess you'd agree with that. And and then and the second half of that is that that the governor needs to step in and get their attention. Is that it? That's right. And I think, you know, we've got to be working aggressively with our U.S. congressional delegation. I've already met with a couple of the congressmen on this nullification thing and been told they think that's a great way to go. They're up there trying to stop these actions as well. And when they're ineffective, it it makes them carry a little, it it gives them a little bit bigger hammer if they can say, look, not only... um, are we as a as the Texas congressional delegation going to vote against this measure? But we know that our governor is going to stand behind us, and we're going to be met in federal court. Okay. The governor is going to challenge the uh, U.S. the Texas Attorney General to go to federal court to fight the U.S. government in federal court. The governor is going to nullify and prohibit prevent uh, this law from being or this legal action from having any uh, enforcement action in the state of Texas. And the Texas legislature is going to pass their own law, making whatever we just did illegal in the state of Texas. When we start to rattle that saber, I believe we provide a very powerful check on the over-aggressive action of the federal government. And we've got sister states that are just chomping up the bit to have some help from Texas. Thirteen of them have already filed nullification language against health care, and we've got our governor saying, well, I'm not sure that... You know, there's anything we can do about that. Baloney. It is the state who stands up against the federal government and says we're sovereign. There is no authority over the state except for those Article One, Section Eight powers that we had specifically given to the federal government. Okay, I got, Otherwise, I got, you have no authority. I got, here. I got another caller just dying to get on here. Hi, good morning. You're on the air live with Deborah Medina. Good morning. Whoops, I didn't. They, I thought you hung on. Hi, good morning. You're on the air live with Deborah Medina. You there? Yes. Uh, 
does the governor or the candidate support uh, the handgun laws that are in Texas now? And also, would she uh, work to broaden those laws and uh, possibly take a what you, yeah, okay. long look? That was that was one of your big questions at the debate. College yeah. campuses, and I'll take it offline. Yeah, all right. Well, that was one of the big questions at the at the debate too, Deborah. What's up? Yeah, I think that um, I have said in gun ownership is an essential element of freedom, and the the real issue in Texas ought to be whether or not we have gun registration, not whether or not we have an open carry. We we got chubbed on the open carry thing in Austin this last session and didn't get anywhere. The real issue is can I own a gun and carry it wherever I want to? We ought to say that we're eliminating gun registration in Texas. It's been used for one thing only throughout history. That's to confiscate people's guns. If, if our leadership understood how man protects, I mean, government's job, protect life, liberty, and property. You do that with a weapon. Learn to use a weapon, own a weapon, keep a weapon with you. So absolutely, we've got to do a bunch of work in Texas to make it easier for that to happen. Um, Deborah, you're going to be criticized because of a lack of experience. Like, why no publicly held office and straight to the governor's mansion how about, like, uh, Mayor of Beesville in between? No, um, no, nothing, you know, political there, but the, all the right kinds of experience. Hard work and honest living, balancing a budget, and working not just building my own business, but having worked for prior to going into and starting our own uh, small company, having worked in multi-million dollar corporate health care environments, those highly regulated big corporations that learn to make a profit, all the right kinds of experience. In fact, we've got a commercial up on the website now that says, I have no experience with corporate lobbyists and, you know, Wall Street banksters. My experience is in making an honest living, and that, I think, is all the difference. Our founders believed we would draw our, our elected political leaders from amongst ourselves and they would go in for a time and they would serve people who understand the constitution understand what protects and what destroys freedom that's the kind of individual that we need and and we've gone you know not many of us like the path we're on and that is electing the political elite re-electing the political elite that yep. political experience isn't giving us the kinds of public policy that most of us believe we need. So, Deborah, yes or no? Uh, Should there be term limits on the governor's position in the state of Texas? I think that there should be term limits a, on every political office, and I've been talking about that a lot, encouraging the Texas Republican Party to pass a rule. I don't believe we'll ever get legislation. Uh, I don't think legislators will pass that kind of law, but the party could establish that as a rule and it's not a punishment. It is a protective measure. We all limit our own exposure to corruption. We limit the exposure of our children and those we care about to, co to corrupt influences. And yet we'd all probably recognize that politics is a powerful place and absolute power. Deborah Medina, um, I, Deborah, we've kept you over time. And, I, and I've got a hard break I've got to catch here. I, you're doing a great job out there. And uh, you've got a lot of supporters here in Midland, believe me. Thank you. I look forward to getting out to so, West Texas. So get out here is all I can tell you is get out here and see us once in a while, okay? All right.